we are at the Austin Country Club, which has hosted the WGC match play for a very long time. I can't remember how far it goes back. Um, should have done that research before coming on, but I don't think it's really it's all that relevant. I believe this is also the last year that this tournament's going to be played because they're updating the schedule. They're getting rid of some of these events, adding different elevated or elevating other events. So I think this is the last time we're going to see this event, which is, I don't know. I'm very indifferent. I don't really care if I'm being honest. Now, what you see on the screen are beneficial shot shapes. These aren't required. It's just as I reviewed the golf course, you know, hole by hole using satellite imagery, I was like, you know what? A lot of these shot shapes look beneficial. So I kind of do a little summary down here. It looks like a draw is a bit more beneficial than a fade, but just barely. And of course, like we had um, Scotty Scheffler winning this tournament last year. He predominantly hits a fade. So this isn't an end all be all. This is maybe a tiebreaker between one or two golfers that you have. That's all that I would say. So a little irrelevant in my opinion. Again, it's 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 match play. So it's going to be golfer versus golfer. If I could find a way to capture mental fortitude and maybe mind games, like who is this um, uh, a mental ninja, I would rather have that type of stat on here as opposed to like shot shapes. It doesn't really matter, in my opinion, the, the shot shape stuff. So going on to the tournament, it's match play. I think most of you that are visiting this channel know what's about to transpire this week. Uh, we have group play. Obviously that is indicative of the brackets that are on the sweet spot uh, cheat sheet. Again, you can find that in the, uh, the uh, description of this video. There's a link to that, to the cheat sheet. So you can see the, the bracket there. You can also see the bracket on the optimizer. It's going to include each golfer and each group. Now I have it set a little different than what you're going to see in, in most places. Like technically this is group one, this would be group two, but I have it all together for group one because my optimizer uses that logic. Uh, you, in all honesty. So here's, here's the strategy portion of this. You want one golfer from this group. That's why I call it group one, this little quadrant here, because they're going to play group play. So Scotty Scheffler is going to play Tom Kim. He's going to play Alex Noren, and he's going to play Davis Riley one time. And I mean, each golfer plays each other once. Whoever has the most wins from this group play, so there's going to be three games played for each golfer, whoever has the best record moves on to the next round. So, and if there's any ties, then they play, they do playoffs. They, they go into one whole sudden death playoffs. So if, say, Scotty Scheffler goes 2-0-1, and one, and so too does Tom Kim, say, when Tom Kim and Scotty Scheffler played each other, um, we could just do something like this. It doesn't really matter. Um, they played each other, and they tied. Maybe they played the first day, and it goes to, what, Friday, where they, they figure out group play? Because they tied, they would then go play one more hole. And whoever wins that hole then moves on. Well, if they tie that, they go to another hole. So on and so forth until there is a winner that um, has been anoint anointed. I can't think of the right word. But that's going to be that's going to apply for every one of these groups. Now, you can see here you want all six golfers to make the quarterfinals. I have highlighted that in red. So it would be fairly, uh, sort of foolish if you chose like Scotty Scheffler and say Maverick McNeely. Because Scotty Scheffler, if he wins his group, he's going to go here. Maverick McNeely is going to go here. Well, guess what? One of those guys goes to the quarterfinals. And you have not built an optimal lineup because you selected one of these guys. Again, this week is mostly about strategy. So if you do like Scotty Scheffler... I would say avoid any of these golfers um, 
in this group, this, this whole group right here. Just avoid them. Now, you could also make the argument to avoid some of the golfers here. But here's the thing. You're going to have to select two golfers that just won't get past the quarterfinals. That's fine. That's how you build an optimal lineup for the match play. Because only four golfers, you know, come to the semifinals and then to the championship. Championship and third place game. You want all four of your golfers right in here. These places. First, second, third, and fourth place. And then your remaining golfers, you just want to get to the uh, quarterfinals. The, the remaining two golfers. So I think, I mean, it's very imperative that you only select, uh, select a max of two golfers per quadrant that I have on here. Again, that is also built into the optimizer. So you can see we only want one golfer per group, which I have already discussed, and only a max of two golfers per quadrant. That would be the best way to build your lineups. Um, I was already building lineups. It's very interesting not that we didn't have a quadrant four golfer. That would make no sense. I suppose now nah, you would want at least one. Yeah, okay. So here's what I would do. I would go one, 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 one. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this because when we go over pass optimal and GPP winning lineups, we're going to see that you can have some golfers in ninth place, which ninth place would be back here. All of these would be ninth place. The, uh, the round of 16 is technically ninth place um, because everyone who makes it to the quarterfinals has at least hit eighth place. So again, you'll see that here when we talk about the uh, pass optimal and GPP winning lineups. Yeah, this is mostly strategy. You don't want to select more than two golfers per quadrant and you certainly don't want to select more than one golfer per group. That's how you're going to build your most optimal lineups. Scoring is going to be really different this week. Uh, there's going to be DraftKings points are going to be based off of how many holes are remaining per match. So if if golfers play like five holes and then one golfer's like, you know what, I quit, I'm done, I don't want to play the rest of this match. You're going to get rewarded for all of the holes not played if you have that golfer who didn't quit and who won that match. So th th that's really hard to forecast. You can certainly try to look at stats that, that look into that kind of stuff, like, you know, win losses when it comes to match play, how many holes remaining, but it's, it's different every single time you play. I don't think it's really necessary to look at match play stats. You certainly can. Cause I mean, there are golfers like uh, Kevin Kisner and Matt Kuchar who just show up every single match play. And I think those guys are mental ninjas. They know how to get into your mind whenever you're playing. Trust me, as a competitive golfer, I know golfers like that. I'm sort of like that when it comes to playing. If you and I were ever to play, I'm going to play mind games with you as much as possible. There's no way to figure out how some of these golfers are. But I can tell you right now, Matt Kuchar and Kevin Kisner, they're one and the same. They're going to get under your skin when you're playing them. It also depends on how well they're playing, by the way. So even if they have that mental, you know, ninja game that I'm, I'm kind of talking about, if they're not playing well, it doesn't really matter. Because if, if Kevin Kisner goes up against Max Homa and Kevin Kisner's making sixes and sevens on holes, Max Homa's just going to be like, okay, dude, like, I don't really care what you have to say. You kind of suck. And <laughs> he's just going to easily win. But there is, there is some kind of gamesmanship when it comes to um when it comes to this match play stuff so that's really all that i have to talk about with the tournament information we could get into the strength of field but it really doesn't matter it's mono -e mono match play it is way more imperative to follow the strategy as opposed to just trying to figure out who the best golfers are at this golf course it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter it's the strategy is 100% of your concern and what you should do. So maybe you find the two golfers, the three golfers, the four golfers that you really like, and then just, you know, make sure you're finding the guys that get to the quarterfinals. That's, that's essentially it. That's all that you need to do with this tournament and playing DraftKings golf. So 
again, this is all available to you with the cheat sheet that I have. Um, you can see their seeds, their quads, their groups. Uh, the 2023 bracket is here. And again, if you want to use the optimizer, that's also available to you as well. I had, I had said this in the, in the beginning of the preview video. To get these things, you got to be subscribed to the channel. Um, if you want the optimizer, you're going to have to reach out to me at sweetspotdfs at gmail.com. Um, and then comment down below so I know who you are and that kind of stuff. So again, I'm making it really easy for you. You can figure this stuff out without really, you don't even really have to figure this stuff out. I have it built into the optimizer. So it's going to be really easy for you if you do use that. So that's going to take care of the tournament and the golf course.